Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And, because I understand that not everyone has full EXT metas, I wanted to come back to Inferno Speed Battle with maybe just an EX Protector that maybe you got lucky with, and a bunch of older 5-star characters that still, I believe, have enough power when combining alts to take out Velzard to do her 537k HP, and I feel like this should still work. It just, you know, their speed battles are meant for speed, and if you don't, if you didn't play during a speed meta and you don't have some options, like, ooh, that's kind of unfortunate. They did give us kind of a freebie with the full hand of blues that you can convert into rainbows, but that's assuming you have Visions of Coleus Rimuru, who is an EX character. He is a year old, but you gotta have an EX character there. So, the first team I have built is an Exalted Champion-ish team with Velzard, Veldora, Free to Play Trya, and then the first anniversary Dark team, Rimuru, Shinsha, and Milam. So we have two single target Dark DPS characters who can hopefully, when their powers combined with the guaranteed crits and the ult and the Dark attack, be able to take them out. Shinsha is not going to be at full power though because we're not going to hit turn 8, so it's going to be a 50% Dark buff. She is skill fused though, so it'll be 50% dark up and 50% dark resistance down if we actually end up using that skill. Alright, so we just need to get some orbs. None of these characters are EXs, so we don't need a, a lot of orbs. And we're going to have Veldora's green buff, so let's just go ahead and... I guess we'll bring Tr Milliman for Trya and Shinsha in for Veldora. And we'll go ahead and send these oranges. Maybe I should have done that the other way around. Because we want Milm to be our primary nuke, yeah. That would have been a little bit better, huh? I mean, we do have 73 points. We could just do this. We could use both Milm and try as converts, and we'll, we'd still be fine. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I wish we had a little bit more so we could use the green buff as well. But it's not the end of the world. Rimuru being the AoE is not a primary concern for nuking. So we're not totally worried about that. And then we also have enough to use Shinja's debuff, which is crit resistance down and extra skill points on greens, which I guess can help us out. So we're very close to getting a Milim ult. That's good. We need a few Shinja orbs now. Preferably, I think, three or four, depending. Okay, well, we get two. That'll be enough to get Milim's ult, for sure, and probably Veldora or Rimuru's ult for whoever you know needs it. Uh, green buff, active, lower the magic resistance a little bit for some extra chip damage here. We'll bring Rimuru in and we'll get his ult at least. And then we'll see if we can get maybe a Shinsha ult on the following turn. And so we have a triple ult scenario. Oh, no, okay, we get it anyways. We just don't get a Rimuru ult, surprisingly. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I mean, we only need one more orb for Rimuru and we, we call it a day. So, we just need points, though. Oh, the 80-point skill is locked for this turn only. So we can't nuke and use Shinsha's buff now. But what we can do is we can just burn this turn out. We'll get the Rimuru ult, I think, from this nerf blue. Yeah, just barely. And we'll get 30 more skill points here. And that should be enough. 55, 40, 80... And... No, we're 10 points shy. So what's going to be the difference maker here? The 50 up and 50 down, or the alt and the crit? And then probably more crit resistance at that point? Let's go with that. Mm, yeah, if we, had if we had had access to Veldora's green buff on turn 2, that would have made a lot more difference. Oh, and we're getting the dark buff from Veldar Velzard. What am I talking about? So we would have only really benefited from the dark resistance down. Okay, well, uh, you, you've probably been calling me an idiot for the past five minutes or so. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, Rimuru does 101. Shinsha does 160. And Milim, because she's stronger, uh, she should do a bit more than 160. 204. Okay, so there it is. If Melum was not skill-fused, then we, it would have just been a 
15% personal attack buff for her instead of 25% for the entire front line because they're all dark. Still think we would have been okay. And then Rimuru, his skill fusion just knocked the price down 15 points. Everyone is still dark, so it's not like we brought any Temps League characters to actually nuke. So that worked out fine. Let's try some good old-fashioned burn now. All right, so we've got the Fire 2.0 team with the slight substitution in Trya, so we can maybe get a little bit extra protection gauge for Toa in the early parts of the fight. We're going to rely on the single target damage of both Violet and Benny Maru with the Fire buff and the Alt buff from Guy. Uh, the Burn will hopefully kick in fairly hard with Violet and Benny Maru's orb change, well, orb change burn here, and then her own personal burn and attack buff. We'll, we'll see if we can do 500,000 damage here. We might need a little bit extra support, but and we'll try it out. Alright, so Benny Maru changes oranges to green, so we need to burn out, or we need to take away these blue orbs and maybe pray that we get a green and an orange next turn, or actually just two greens. Maybe, hopefully, preferably. Uh, well, it almost worked. We're not getting any passive points because we're using Toa. She's an old protector nowadays. So, let's just... I guess we'll hold on to the burn for now, and we'll just send these green orbs, and that will get us not a protector. Uh, where's Guy? He's got turn 3 protection gauge, so we'll bank on that. We'll take him out for Shizu. Yeah, okay. So his trait will kick in. We'll get Toa next turn. Okay, well, if he'd change blues, that'd be great right there, but he doesn't. Well, no, it doesn't actually matter, does it? Okay, well, we'll do some attack stacks. We'll do some extra instant damage, and then we'll enhance the damage on the oranges, which is what we're going to get here. Toa does not cycle very well. We have a protection gauge charm on, which is, you know, super awesome and everything. But it doesn't really make that much of a difference, all things said and done. Let's bring Shizu back in. We'll use the Pierce buff as well to just help Violet do a little bit extra damage here. We've got one stack of burn because I can't use Benny Mario now because he'd convert away from a full hand of oranges, which is just super peachy. Uh, I guess we could have used that before we converted, huh, with Toa? That would have been something we could have done. We didn't actually get a Violet alt there. Hmm. Okay, we only have one more turn, and that one blue is not going to get us anything here. Yeah, I mean, he's taken... She's taken a decent amount of damage. Maybe if we had two alts, we would be okay. And we could use both big-time buffs next turn. Yeah, it would just... We would need another Violet Orb. Or something. Okay, well, let's make a cut and come back. Okay, we got a much better uh, turn here. So we turn two, we got a very good hand. We could convert fully with greens just using Trya. Turn three, we've got now this full hand of oranges. We've got two stacks of burn because we used the Benny Mario orb change. We used the instant damage. We used all of the buffs from Violet and Shizu that we could without burning the fire buff. And now we're going to get both alts here and we're ready to store the well actually we don't actually have to store the buff we could nuke next turn probably and get away with it it's just that will we do enough damage the burn does 44k we'll retain those two stacks of burn there and i think yeah they last for three turns huh so what we could do actually we don't get a lot of points back here would we uh I kind of wanted to use another stack of the burn. I don't know if we would make it back, though. So let's see if this is enough power to actually kill with these two stacks. So we'll do the fire attack and the fire resistance down, and then we'll bring Guy in, and we'll use Toa to change three of these blue orbs, but more importantly, give us 40 skill points, which allows us to use the alt buff and the crit resistance down, which will help Violet do even more damage. So, how is this going to fare in terms of damage output? How much health does she have left? 340? Eh, let's see. We might need another stack of burn, if anything. 
Benny Maru does 60k, that's not great. But Violet being the true DPS, she does 177. Oh, this she should be dead. Off the burn here. Oh yeah, 100%. 118k of burn. There we go. I mean, that that is an old, old team. And the only new character, remotely new character we use is a free-to-play character in Trya. So, burn works. We, You can use burn efficiently still in 2024. Hilarious, isn't it? Alright, the next team is going to be this Space Millen-focused team with Overlord Rimuru as the protector. So a stacking green team, but we're going to try and get it done. We're bringing the Masked Hero for not only her crit, but the extra turn we get from the Rewind, which is going to be pretty important. And then we've got Trya for still the Goddess of Green Orb changing, Isis for the blue convert and the green buff, Shinsha is a single target space character, so she'll benefit from the space buff that Milim is giving. And she's got an alt buff with space resistance down, which means that everyone can alt better, and Milim actually gets to benefit off of the space resistance. And then Milim herself has the Drago buff in her attack, which will enhance everything that's put on her, plus the 50% space buff that's extra because it's skill fused, it's giving her magic power for 30%. If she's not skill fused, uh... It might be a little rough. You can still try it. I just, I don't know. Based on the damage output we had here, it might be a little short, especially since my Millum was also 120 with fairly good gear. So starting out, we're going to bring Shinsha in for the Masked Hero. She's got another orb incoming. We're going to send the blues, and we're looking for a perfect hand, whether or not it's just the two Trya orbs or you get two a green and another Trya on the sixth orb. You just need a full hand of greens on turn two, however you're going to make that work. That's why I leave Trya in the first slot and I leave her up front in case we need to convert those two and if she gets any more. But here, we're looking good. We've got a full hand of greens, that gives us a decent amount of points, and more importantly, it gives us a stack of Rimuru. So that's 10% extra element damage, 100% skill point gain, which is really, really important for this team. Turn two... No Millum Orbs, but it's going to be okay because we can convert this as well. So we'll bring Try it in for the hero. We'll not use the Rewind just yet. But we do need to reset with Rimuru, which means that everyone up front is giving an extra element buff that's permanent. So it's going to help Millum and Shinja hit a bit harder. And then it's reset so we can use the Orb Change with Trya. First, I just want to make sure that you know her self-convert was going to hit, and then I need to make sure that her other convert was also what we actually needed before I swapped her away. And now we'll bring Isis in for the green buff, and while Isis is not a nuking character, she's going to get a lot of gauge here, which isn't the worst thing in the world based on the hand that we're about to get. Then also needs a bit of RNG, because turn two, she's going to Velzard's going to convert your entire hand to blues, and you kind of need the pieces to fall correctly into another hand of greens or some way, shape, and form to make it work. So we'll bring the hero in for Shinsha. She's got her alt. She's fine. This mostly works out. I really wish I didn't have to swap Isis, but, you know, we Milam's got to get some orbs for her alt. And those two are not going to get enough, so we need to have a good hand on the rewind as well. So what we end up doing is I have to just pray that the orb convert for Isis falls properly, which, thankfully, it does. So now we'll swap Isis out. That'll bring in the orange orb. And now Trya comes in, and we use Rimuru to reset her again because she's at 45 points. And we can use her self-convert to hit the one blue, and then her special convert to hit the other blue and the orange. And that gives us a full hand right there. And we're on the rewind, so whatever we get next turn is free and easy. I can't orb change anything, but I can use the crit buff here, and I can use Drago, because we're going to make all these points back, because Reamer is just that good, and it gives us a little bit extra chip damage against Velzar, which does make an impact. So if you can get like a full hand of Millum orbs right here, that's even better, because it means you need less, and if she's not skill fused, well, it doesn't really matter, because you're doing a lot of extra damage. But the rewind kicks in, and we got four orbs here, nothing else I can do, nothing else I want to do. And we're going to, I think, say, yeah. Um, do we save the Rimuru or do we use one here? I can't remember. Uh, 
I think. Yeah, I can't swap anyone, so I just leave it. So I'm going to give the two stacks that we're going to get back, and I save them for Milam and Shinsha. So 16k, all right, fine. She's at a down a third of HP. Hero is binded. That is... The best case scenario is having Milam binded here because she's not going anywhere regardless. But yeah, it is what it is. So we can't give Shinsha the crit buff. Well, no, actually we can. Because you can come in for Trya. Sorry. I was thinking of a different run here. So we'll have 250 points. We have enough. We can reset twice with Rimuru, but give everybody an extra 20% element buff, which stacks on top of the 50% space buff that Milam is giving. And now we have plenty of points to use all three of the big time buffs and the Drago buffs. So one, two, three, and four. Uh, the Enamor doesn't do anything. Pierce resistance down doesn't matter because we're not piercing with this team. So I don't look at Velzard's remaining HP, but we're going to pray that this hand actually works out. So Shinsha, 113, not super great. Milim does 288. I don't know how much of that was overkill or if that was barely enough. And she is skill fused. So if she's if your Milim is not skill fused and you want to try and run this team, just know that you might need those follow-up orbs. You might need a third alt or something. You need a full six hand send. Tra Velzard is guarding on the final turn. So your normal orbs aren't going to do nearly as much damage as they would uh, normally. So it, it, it's a bit iffy. But, as an example, I did also try this with the Dark Protector Veldora. It was the same exact team, but Veldora is giving us extra magic damage, which means that Milim's skill fusion is irrelevant, because hers is only 30% and Veldora is giving 70%. The only problem here is that even with triple ults, I have exactly enough points to use the three big time buffs, but not Drago, which is the killer here. So, because I don't have that Drago, we don't actually kill. Because I can't enhance the magic buff, I can't enhance the space buff, and I can't enhance my attack buff for Milum. So we're going to fall just short. And even with the full 6 hand send with this Veldora team, it's not quite enough. But, if you don't have the Overlord Rimuru, and you do have this team, and you have Veldora, you can attempt to run this. You just need things to really, really, really go your way and have like Milam's alt done early and use the Drago buff early and send her away. So the hero does 48k. Everyone's got every buff except Drago. Shinsha does 141. And then Milam's alt does... Does? 168. So if we had had that Drago buff, she would have killed on that nuke but unfortunate. But this is proof of concept that if you get lucky and everything works out for you, the Veldora Protector can also kind of get this done. It's just, you need a bit more RNG. But it, it runs the same exact way as the Overlord Rimuru team did. You're still looking for that perfect hand on turn two. You're still looking for alts and points and all that. It's a little bit harder to get points on this team because Veldora doesn't give us points inherently. So you're really only banking on the green buff from Isis. So that's another factor of RNG you have to consider, but it is possible.